When Mike Pence officially announced his presidential campaign, he launched an attack on Donald Trump that could be the strongest possible line of attack against Donald Trump with the significant segment of Republican voters who vote only on the issue of banning abortion. Donald Trump and others in this race are retreating from the cause of the unborn. The sanctity of life has been our party's calling for a half a century, long before Donald Trump was a part of it. But now he treats it as an inconvenience, even blaming our election losses in 2022 on overturning Roe v. Wade. As your president, I will always stand for the sanctity of life, and I will not rest, and I will not relent until we restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law in every state in the land. With Mike Pence in the race, the campaign for the Republican presidential nomination is going to make it very clear that abortion rights are at stake, stake in all 50 states if a Republican wins the White House. Joining us now is Democratic Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester of Delaware. She is the national co-chair of President Biden's re-election campaign. Uh, do you have to be from Delaware to be a co-chair of the re-election campaign? I don't think you yeah. have to be, but I think it's a good yeah, start. It sounds it's a like good it helps. Start. So I was quite stunned when I heard uh, Vice President Pence say that because he is saying he wants to take control of all laws on abortion in Delaware, in every state, in California, in every state. I, I have to tell you, um, I'm not surprised. Um, I think it is uh, really indicative of a party that is like there's this race to the right, to the extreme. And, you know, what I saw, even in my own state of Delaware, during that last election, um, that Democrats, Republicans, and independents came up to me after the election and said this was an issue for them. Mm -hmm. And so I think, number one, it's a bad calculation. I think, number two, trying to give Donald Trump a pass as if he's a moderate is really not true either. We know that the court is what it is now because of Donald mm -hmm. Trump. And again, I think, you know, I, when I was on the floor of the House, I remember we got a chance to vote you know, to, to make sure that Roe was the law of the land. And I remember saying in my speech, there is no room in our wombs for politicians, and that includes Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, I think that's uh, not a winning strategy because the majority of Americans know that this is a choice, a decision that's between a woman and her doctor, not government, not politicians. It's between a woman and her doctor. So I think it's a miscalculation. And thank goodness, um, you know, we have a president who is strongly behind this fundamental freedom and this autonomy of our bodies. Yeah, it's a disastrous uh, strategy, according to all polls. It's a, it, he's stating a position that is an extremist position that Mike Pence is going to try to force onto Donald Trump and the other candidates on the Republican uh, debate stage. So the, in, the Republican campaign for the nomination is going to be consumed with this issue because Mike Pence has found and wants to emphasize where they don't agree right. so they can fight about it. Right. And his fight is, I want to take control of, the, of, the, of these laws in all 50 states and ban all abortions in all 50 states. Yeah. I mean, for me, this issue... I think about the fact that not only has this been the law of the land for most of my life, Ro, but my daughter, my daughter-in-law, and just four months ago, I had my first grandchild. And for me, the focus on making sure that, again, we have control over our bodies is so important. And then you think about who's mostly impacted by these laws, women of color, women in rural areas, people who um, are poor, and, and also young people. And so to me, this is uh, uh, not a recipe for success for them. And all 50,000 of them are welcome to have at it mm -hmm. because Joe Biden knows where he stands, and, and so do we. You know, it must be really difficult uh, for Delaware Senator Tom Carper to think of you as having a grandchild <laughs> because... When he announced that he's not going to run for re-election, uh, 
This is what he said about you when he's announcing he's not running for re-election. I know Lisa, Ed and I have known Lisa since she was an intern in our congressional office a million years ago. We love Lisa. And I spoke with her this morning. I said, uh, you've been patient, waiting for me to get out of the way, and uh, I'm going to get out of the way. And uh, I uh, hope you uh, run, and I hope you'll let me support, uh, support you in, in, that, uh, in that mission. So there's an open Senate seat in your state of Delaware. Uh, the retiring senator wants you to run, wants to support you to uh, take over his seat. Have you been thinking about it? Well, uh, first of all, I have to give uh, just kudos and celebration to Senator Carper for all the things that he's done for our state and for our country. Um, I was surprised at his announcement. Uh, and and I will tell you, I said before he announced that if the seat should become open, that I was, you know, really interested. And I am still interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am still interested. What do you, how do how do you make that kind of decision from because you, you've established yourself as a serious president presence in the House of Representatives and uh, you look over the other side and you say, do I want to go in there as a freshman? Yeah, you know, for me, um, whenever I make a serious decision, I I think about it, I pray about it, and then I plan. And for me, the thought of starting as an intern for Tom Carper mm. back in 1988 and, you know, after meeting him at a town hall meeting, then becoming a cabinet secretary under him and now his colleague, um, the, 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 it, it has just been a real honor and a blessing to serve Delaware. And so um, as I think about it, um, I've been thinking about it. I've definitely been praying about it. And now let's see about what, what happens in terms well, of when you when you uh, have a decision, uh, yeah. please come back and let us know. And in the meantime, I can tell you every intern in Washington is cheering <laughs> for you. They want to see that road from intern in the senator's office to being the senator in that office. Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We'll be right back.